talk about layer 7 load balancer. This is actually fancier. So let's, let's consider this. Okay, this is a layer 7 load balancer. What it actually means is it's, it operates at the layer 7. That means it can see the application data. It is authorized to see that stuff. It is authorized to decrypt. If you told it to, okay, it's going to establish a TLS connection between you and the client. Between what does that mean? Between the client and this load balancer, gives you the certificate of the load balancer and it can decrypt your stuff. Okay, it can look at your stuff and it can make decision. If it's HTTP, it can just look through that stuff. Okay, and then what happens is it will make decision based on that. So now I'm gonna do here is I have this microservices example here where uh, I have an uh, an IP address here, service dedicated just for serving pictures voice notes on WhatsApp, pictures on WhatsApp or Instagram, whatever, right? I have a dedicated server. It has a higher bandwidth maybe. It has, I don't know, more processor power, has compression, has caching, all, all that kind of stuff. And this guy, is it, maybe this is hosted on S3. This guy, just for comments, it stores numbers and the strings which is the comments maybe we're using mongodb or postgres database here okay but the client talks to one server the one load balancer okay i don't know if we're gonna call this load balancer here but it acts like more like a reverse proxy ingress but it's the same concept right it, you can still load balance things based on on the picture here so what I'm going to do, the client will make a TCP connection between itself and the load balancer. And then what the, the, the essentially says, okay, I'm coming from me, going to you, sir. I want to get pictures. Give me all the pictures. And, and it doesn't obviously exist here, right? This get request. So now it will actually look at the data and say, oh, and there's a rule says, okay, if slash pictures then forward to this set of nodes and it could be one machine could be seven machines all right guys and then it could pick load balancer between it's these machines and it says okay l l wait a minute okay you want to go there i'm going to stop you there this is me and you this is one tcp connection i gonna establish a connection between myself and the server that you want it to con communicate to. So it's going to create a new TCP package, forward that stuff to that server, 44333, and coming from that. So the, again, the server doesn't know which client is coming from. It might even change the headers. It might actually uh, add more headers. It might just modify the content because it owns it, because it can look at it, because it has full access to all that content if obviously it can decrypt it okay which it can and uh, so what what do you see here is actually two tcp connections okay this could be secured tls right so the tls handshake should be happening here and if you decided to have tls at the back end which you you which you should in case of a cloud application some of you guys noted that in my previous video yes I, I said that you don't have to encrypt at the back end, but it's, it's a good idea to encrypt it. Obviously, you're adding the overhead of uh, of encrypting and decrypting, but essentially that boop, 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 that's two connections, okay? And then you get a picture, you're going to forward to the picture. So what happens if I want to go to the comments? Well, it looks at the rules find the rules that you're going to comment, establish a connection with the guy, 4444, from two, and then res uh, just forward the connections, right? Gets the response, uh, get back the results, and then forward it back to the client. So it, it maintains two connections and takes the data, re-encrypt it with the new TLS certificate, and then pass it in, not, not necessarily, the symmetric key, and then pass it to the client. So it, it does decryption, encryption, decryption, encryption. It does a lot of stuff, but it gives you huge benefits, okay? Let's talk about pros and cons, guys. Pros and cons. Pros, what's good about this? Well, smart load balancing. We can do a lot of smart load balancing. We can do all this microservices stuff. We can do, uh, we can look at the data and make decisions based on the data and forward the data based on certain logic, right? On the headers. Which is pretty powerful, if you ask me. It can do caching! Yes, it can do the caching. 
because now I know you are requesting slash index.html. I know that I keep this stuff cached handy dandy on my machine. I'm going to serve it to you because I look at the data. I look. And then it's great for microservices as we showed. And cons. What's the bad thing about this? Is there something bad about this? Well, it is expensive. It looks at the data. Again, guys, you can argue with me. A lot of people say, even in GenX and their website say, yes, it's more expensive, but it is, it is almost uh, insignificant because our machines are very powerful stuff and just doing extra encryption or decryption is nothing to it, right? And looking at the data, right, parsing the data, that's not much, okay? It's, it's maybe a few cycles more. But nevertheless, it is more expensive. If you're using a Raspberry Pi as a load f layer 4 advanced versus layer 7, you can, you can see the difference. It decrypts, as we said, it terminates TLS if it has one. It decrypts the data. So it sends the client back the certificate of the load balancer. So it might use a, a server name indication here uh, uh, to serve different connections, right? Uh, different certificates, right? Especially if you're having multiple domains going through that, right? Because users can can actually like go to about dot example.com or example.com or www.example.com if you have multiple domains you can go to the same IP but serve different certificates you can you can do it here because you are essentially the, the terminator you terminate TLS it has two TCP connections okay um, pros and cons obviously it's less, less secure in my opinion again because it because it just looks through your stuff and maybe you're not comfortable that the load balancer looks at your data. Some people don't, right? Uh, right. Some people are paranoid that, hey, I don't want the load balancer to look at my data. I want it to be a dumb layer, layer for load balancer. Okay. Two TCP connections, obviously. Uh, so which means more, which it, it, it could be a good thing or a bad thing in my opinion, right? A bad thing because more connections, you have to believe it persisted, right? That means these timeouts are very critical, right? Especially if you're using layer four load balancer versus one timeout. But with with these TCP connections, you can use. Uh, I don't know if lo layer seven load balancer like Nginx or HR Proxy does that, but I would imagine sharing different clients with the same TCP connection at the back end because they don't care as long as you can send data through the same connection why do you care right so i would pool these connections if i would i would implement this i would pool these tcp connections and if i would serve by 100 clients i could use three connections to serve at the back end to serve all these 100 clients right but i, I might be wrong okay i never implemented a proxy before so i might be wrong right again guys correct me if i'm wrong if i'm saying uh, bs stuff must share the TLS certificate. We talked about that. You, um, if 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 you if you don't trust the load balancer, you'll you don't have choice. You have to share that uh, certificate. All right.